segment of uh, Big Bang, this episode of Big Bang Theory, I was uh, BTS vlog. It is currently uh, 22 hours and 47 minutes into the day of Sunday, July 10th, 2016. Oh, it's been, uh, in terms of overall progress, it's been a good week, uh, but, uh, is with any week, there's always, and with any type of progress, there's always success and there's always failure. And so, uh, the two needs to be balanced out. In areas where you failed, you need to sort of go in and see what corrections need to be made in order to sort of correct the problem, and uh, then you try to move forward with that. So, sometimes you succeed, and sometimes you don't succeed in repairing the problem. Sometimes it takes a longer time uh, or, or other solutions in order to repair the problem. Uh, that's sort of causing one of the failures, so it's not necessarily an immediate fix, and so it does indeed take some time to sort of work your way through these things, and that's sort of what the the breaks that are in between here kind of indicate that uh, you know that I'm not exactly on time with a lot of different things in this because there's a, a problem setting up, there's problems uh, dealing with various different issues, and uh, the solutions are not always apparent. Uh, the one thing I am doing out here now, and, and I'll be sitting on the couch later on so we can sit out in the patio. Right now the patio hasn't been, uh, is not, hasn't been functional for the last few days because it's been raining at night. So uh, when it's a moist night uh, uh, and raining, you kind of cover the couch up with the, with the blue tarp here. Yeah, so we got, the, we got the tarp on the couch. So let's kind of give you a... Let me see if we can get a good, better view. Here we go. There's the tarp, right? That's on the couch. That causes the couch up while it's raining. That keeps it nice and dry. And that way I can use the uh, couch as the uh, patio uh, when I get it all set up, uh, usually later on at night. So right now it's still too early. I'm just going to air out the place. Uh, went and checked some of the weather. Uh, doing, uh, planning to do another uh, series of observations for uh, atmospheric physics, particularly looking at the physics of clouds. Um, so I'm getting that set up, uh, done my initial, uh, perusing, you know, walking around for today. I'm going to do a second one in a few minutes, and then come back and just sort of sort of sit outside and, uh, relax a little bit, so. And then we'll sort of, uh, tonight, uh, as I said, we get, come, come out here, uh, later on around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and that's when it's, it's cold us out, uh, and we'll sit down and we'll talk more about, uh, uh, socialism. We'll sort of continue our discussion on the, on the brief history of socialism. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand this the, this history. And most uh, socialists are completely ignorant of their own history. They, uh, and that's because they're continuously re not that they could not that they, ignorant doesn't necessarily mean you can't understand something. It's you don't want to understand it. It's you you refuse to see it, and it's done in a way that uh, uh, the denial is there. Oh yeah, I do understand my own history. And, but, and what happens is you'll see that they go back in and they redefine their history so that the bad stuff that happened in history under socialism, these people weren't really socialists. They were, and they give you an excuse and how they redefined that these people weren't really socialists and therefore this is not the history of socialism and yada, 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 that sort of thing. So we'll get more into that and uh, sort of try to build a better understanding of, uh, of where socialism and where social democracy actually comes from uh, as compared to what the rhetoric is, what, what, do they t what do they say about socialism, you know, what, what they, how do they promote socialism. And the thing is, we need to sort of clear this up, that socialism has been now uh, 
sort of adopted or, or taken over the whole concept of socialism as being a leftist, as being, as being progressive. But that's not necessarily the case. Socialism has, actually has both a left and a right to it. Uh, the Nazis were a part of the socialist spectrum. Uh, it just but a lot of times now, uh, the socialists on the left, they're the ones who have a lot of the uh, say in things. They're along the ones who have a lot of the media. They present themselves as socialists. They sort of deny the other side, the, the right side of socialism. So, as I said, we'll, we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at some of these, uh, some of these understands how they understand things, and ho hopefully try to uh, produce a better view, a better understanding of uh, what's happening in the sort of sort of political spectrum here on socialism, and see how the United States actually fits into this. Because uh, the United States promotes itself as a democracy, they talk about freedom, but the reality is, is that there's a there is a huge socialist history in the United States on both the left and the right. So, uh, in our next segment, we'll get into that. Alrighty, see you then. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to the uh, next segment of Big Bang Theory, as BTS vlog. Yeah, it is. Oh, I just it's. Check the time of day stamp. It is three hours. It is three hours and 36, 37 minutes into the day of Tuesday, July 12th, uh, 2016. Uh, fixed up there. Much better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it, it's hard sometimes getting used to the, the, the camera. Sometimes what you see in the viewer is not exactly the same thing that you get on uh, the, the TV screen or depending on what, what monitor you're viewing it on. So uh, sometimes it's brighter, sometimes it's darker. Uh, it really depends on uh, uh, how the monitor is set that determines the final outcome. So... Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You can't get it exactly right uh, in terms of uh, the film, the uh, video quality. Uh, I was supposed to talk about, we were supposed to do our discussion on on the um, on the patio, but uh, it's uh, a little tired, uh, so I don't know if we'll, we'll talk a little bit about things. I was looking at more about uh, following up on this. Uh, um, the Young Turk channel. The Young Turks channel. This is the guy, Turkish guy named by name Jank, uh, and he puts out this uh, uh, <laughs> if this uh, TV channel called is called Alternative Media. If you watch enough of his stuff and you watch him side by side with Alex Jones, uh, you'll find that uh, he, uh, he's a a progressive version of Alex Jones. So Alex Jones is on the right and he's uh, one of the, uh, the the racists on the, that are on the right because most progressives a few people who are on the right as racist um, and they view themselves as philanthropists and uh, 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 wonderful people. Although, as I said, this is the guy, same guy who considers uh, the, genocides in, the genocide in Turkey uh, which wasn't simply confined to the Armenians. If you talk to people in the area, you talk to Pondi, you talk to people who have a last name like mine, uh, Karas or, or Karathanasis, or, or the last name is Kara, K-A-R-A. And then in, there's sort of an appendage after the Kara. You know, Kara Yani, means, uh, uh, Dark John, uh, Kara Milk, right? or uh, it is Dark Milk or Burnt Milk, uh, Caramel, is uh, burnt honey, dark honey. So that's my last name is Kara. It's synonymous with the word nigger or negro. Uh, so because negro is actually a real world as a word as well. These people don't seem, seem to understand that, that there was a history to words and a history to language. And I think that that's that's uh, sort of part of the socialist mind, part of the progressive mind is to fall into these patterns of um, of groupthink within their own uh, spe specific spheres uh, of uh, understanding. And uh, the socialist sphere, well, um, both the left and the right have these uh, sphere called the moron or the minions, the people who simply fall along and don't lead uh, because they're not capable of leading. Um, 
on the right is because of genetics, just you're born that way, and therefore the only way to resolve the problem is uh, breeding. You know, you, you want to breed the, uh, the idiots and imbeciles out of society. So in other words, you take the ones who are imbeciles and idiots who are, who are and, and these are real definitions, imbeciles, idiots, feeble-minded. Women were considered to be feeble-minded for, for both on the both the left and the right of socialism in the early 1930s. This is why women weren't given the right to vote, because they were considered to be feeble-minded. They weren't able, they didn't view, weren't viewed to be, have the capacity. And you'll also find uh, in some of the scientific journals, uh, uh, and these are peer-reviewed journals, that uh, many people didn't believe, believe black people were, were, were full human beings, that they believed that they were a subspecies of human being. And anyone who wasn't white was also a subspecies. This, this was the view of the Nazis. The Nazis were uh, socialists on the right. Uh, the envi uh, environmentalists on the hand, well, they had some degree of a view on that. But the, envi the, the socialists on the left were particularly called environmentalists in that uh, they viewed that it wasn't necessarily genetics, but, but things in the environment that it led to, led to influences in uh, how the chemistry of the individual, the chemistry of, of the person, kind of sort of fits in together and, you know, makes him who he is. And this is where they came up with the term that, well, if a person is of such a degree where they are called defectives, and the morons, idiots, imbeciles, feeble-minded, uh, we're all in this category of, uh, of, per per uh, of person, that therefore, I mean, and this is this is this is kind of crossed over between left, left and right. The left also had their breeding issues, where you wouldn't, you had a sort of, and this is where the whole idea when you go get married, you have a, a blood test, you have you know all these different things has to be done in order to make sure that you're not marrying an idiot, that the person who's being you're married to is is competent and stuff like that. There's a lot of these competence, and it's they're designed to sort of create the ideal society, and a lot of this is left over from uh, the 1930s, uh, where they had laws against people, if you, and this is where the Three Stooges were, the way the Three Stooges were, uh, they were actually morons, and they belonged to a union, because you, uh, uh, people who were morons belonged to un unions, unions were created to, sort of, because they viewed that workers, the average worker in a factory, couldn't help themselves, that this is the way they were. And they needed someone to mind them. To mind them. They needed someone to take care of them. And this was the whole social system was based on this whole concept of helping the morons in society, the herd in society. And you'll have to go back into Freud to look at uh, the bewildered herd. Um, and it was carried forward by his nep nephew, uh, Edward Bernays, uh, into uh, public relations. And you sort of, there's a lot of information on that on the internet. You can sort of read up on that. Uh, the imbeciles and idiots and morons uh, in the 1930s particularly were sterilized. They were, uh, and it didn't matter whether it was the progressive government or a Nazi government, you know, a socialist left or a socialist right, it didn't matter what government it was, they were sterilized. And they were sterilized to prevent the, these people, the, Im, the, the idiocy, the, the defectiveness from spreading. Now, there was a view in the 1930s amongst the, 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 some of these uh, high-born people who were uh, having these academic salons, and this is, came out of the suffrage movement. This came out of the suffrage movement. Out of, it came out of the uh, the uh, 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 the salons of the nobility, the higher up, in the uh, the aristocracy, who were sitting around having discussions about these different things, uh, these sort of important issues. And they come out with these ideas and say, well, we think we need a schooling system because if it's environmental and not genetic, then we can weed the uh, intelligence out and, uh, and those who are not intelligent uh, will simply be left to work in the factories. And this was the intervention of the school system. The school system was designed to, create, to, create, to, to funnel those who were academically or intellectually inclined into proper positions and let those who are not intellectually inclined into uh, lesser sub-positions, particularly into factories. And this is why you ended up having with a, called a factory school system, because it was there primarily to create workers for society. And this is what it does today. It, it, it produces people who don't think for themselves. It, 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 it simply brainwashes people. 
and they don't view themselves as being brainwashed. But if you look at uh, at the reality behind some of these textbooks here, uh, above, above the of the textbook, you begin to see that these people are are indeed being brainwashed. So it does have that effect. And the thing is, this is the same thing with Jane. Uh, when he approaches these things, he approaches them from the perspective uh, that that his views are always right, that everybody else's views is absurd. I mean, he yells and screams and rants, well, to a certain degree, uh, just the way that Alex Jones does. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, these people, you know, you ask yourself, you know, don't they look in the mirror? Don't they see themselves as this? And the thing is, if you have the view of yourself as being elite and superior to everybody else, then your own arrogance takes care of uh, any self-criticism where you we normally have. It simply dismisses and says, oh, these people are crazy. And that's a lot of what he does. And he was talking about today uh, about a woman who, uh, um, uh, a teacher who uh, is within this liberal society, and teachers are part of the fundamental liberal core, and they're not the elite. The teachers are not elite in the system. They are the uh, just above what we would classify in the uh, socialist system. Uh, if you go into the psychology of the socialist system, they are at the level called high-functioning morons. Uh, and that's, just, it sounds like an insult, but it's not. It's an actual definition. And this is the thing is that when I'm talking about morons, I'm talking about idiots, I'm talking about imbeciles. These are not insults. They're actual definitions of uh, intellectual capacity. And these, these, these definitions were created uh, in the 1930s and before uh, by the social. It, ca it came out of the work done by the, uh, uh, Dr. Sigmund Freud. It came out of, that, it came out of the, the Freudian psychology. This is where it emerged from. And you can actually tra trace a history on this. So you can see where a lot of the socialist ideals come from because there's actually a good, good history behind, uh, back there. And if you sit down, you do enough reading, you do enough studying, you can put together a good history and you, see how, you can see how things interconnect uh, with, our, with our current stream. And the thing is, so what happens, there, this lady had written, uh, believing that she had free speech in the United States, that she had written that how... And she prefaced this, she sort of stated uh, with sort of a, a disclaimer in there, and this is sort of known as an academic qualifier for a sentence, for a sentence. Uh, and instead of going on directly with the sentence, you backtrack a little bit and say, okay, uh, this is not intended to lay blame on people who uh, get raped for being raped. Uh, she, she was talking about the uh, situation where uh, girls go into a party, they get drunk, and then they end up being, being raped. And the, the question is, is that, she was talking from the perspective, and I understood, so you, you can sort of really understand if you're using common sense. You understand, she's talking about the perspective, well, how do you start reducing some of these rapes? How do you start reducing some of these th situations? And the thing is, you have to take a bit of precaution. Well, oh, this was just about it. She's blaming the rape, she's blaming the victim for being raped, and blah, 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 blah. And of course, uh, uh, there's enough uh, reaction to this from the liberal, me from the liberal, from the liberals, from the liberals, from the liberals, <clears throat> from the liberals that the uh, article, the editorial, was pulled from the paper. <laughs> In other words, they censored the, the liberals, who always talk about tolerance, went off the tilt and censored their own newspaper because of their own views and opinion. Her views and opinion did not match theirs and, and what they assumed to be true. Uh, and so they 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 deleted the art, they deleted her editorial, she did the, her, her, her article, and sort of she got into a lot of trouble for this, and this made the uh, some of the some of the uh, leftist media sort of picked this up and talked about this. And this is what the young Turks are then. And they're sitting there ranting and raving about how she's blaming the uh, she's blaming the, uh, the the victim for being raped. And you see it right in the article. It's there. It's just, there's, a, there's a disclaimer right in the beginning of the article that she's saying she's not blaming. She's talking about she's talking about. Uh, where do you know? How do you reduce these uh, these incidences? And I'll give you the example. And they brought the the whole thing was what happens if your son got raped? How do you feel? Said, well, the real thing, and it is, she stops there. He thinks a bit, a little bit. It says, and his qualifying answer is, well, you, that questionnaire doesn't even deserve an answer, type of thing. Well, he said, he says, if you said that thing a question again to me, I'd smash your face. Okay, that's the liberal. That's the liberal view of things. But let's take it from a different point of view. Let's not take it into in, in, in considera consideration of rape. Let's take consideration of the uh, thing I do when I do walking a lot. I do a lot of hiking. And when I hike, I cross roads. 
and in Toronto uh, and in Canada, like cyclists, a lot of pedestrians are getting hit and killed. And the question is, why? And I said, because I've seen it before. Uh, we have the right of way. Pedestrians are, are by law, and we're taught that we have the right of way. That's the law. And so people go, oh, yeah, right away. So they put their headphones on, they have their whatever on, and talking, texting, whatever, listening to music. And as soon as the light is with them, they walk right out into traffic without even looking. Assuming they've got the right of way. And the thing is, is, if that's the case here, and then a truck is coming down, and a truck has a certain distance to stop, it can't stop, I mean, simply like a train. And you cross in front of that truck while he's trying to stop, and you're within his stopping distance. In other words, he, you're at, in the, inside his stopping distance. You know, when he stops, he's past you. Guess what? You're going to die. And the thing is, the people, well, it's not the, it's not the, 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 the person crossing the street fell. It's the truck's fault. No, it's the person crossing the street. As bad as sorry as you are that the person got killed. And, we, and as, a, as a liberal and as, as a socialist, you shouldn't care because they're just uh, random events anyways. N there is no human life. There is no, no soul. There is no, uh, nothing to say sorry about. And the, when the person's gone, he's gone. Because they, they, everything is random. So, you know, there's that view. So what are, you, what are you sorry for? I mean, you define uh, life that's, uh, within the womb as not life anymore. You've changed. It's not longer a baby. And now you can abort it. No problem. Uh, you classify a genocide uh, in your own country as simply a population exchange. No problem. Because you simply redefine it. You re redefine what it was. You change a couple of definitions. And therefore, no more murder. No more, no more, murder, no more genocide. It's, it was a population exchange. And Hitler, Hitler had his own population. Hitler had his own population exchange with the Jews. You know, <laughs> this is the, this is the this is their reality. This is what they've done. And, there's, and the thing is, so what happens is that you, if you're a pedestrian, yes, you may have a legal right away to do something. But if it's if it's going to get you hurt or killed, then you don't do it. All I have to do at a cross street, and it doesn't take me any short more any more time than I would if I just didn't care. You have common courtesy. You make sure all the cars see you, you if there's if there are cars there, and you and, and and you negotiate your way across the street, just the way you would if you have four cars at a four way stop sign, and each one takes its turn going, but everyone has to sort of figure out which one goes first, and that's 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 the whole situation. There is common courtesy. But socialists don't have this common sense. This common sense, this common courtesy, does not exist with the socialists. And the thing is, they don't see themselves like that. They don't see themselves. They don't see this whole issue here. Anyways, uh, <laughs> well, we're almost on 17 minutes now. This discussion. So uh, I think we'll come back tomorrow night. Uh, this will be sort of extend out another night uh, for this, and uh, uh, we'll sit down. We'll have a little bit of a discussion and. Uh, Take a little, take a little, a bit more of a look into the socialist mind, and maybe to sort of interweave some of the history involved in it as well, and, and where a lot of this came from, and where it's uh, sort of going. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it for now. I think I'm be going in in a little bit, anyways, because it's almost like four, four o'clock in the morning, four thirty in the morning. So, uh, if it's in that range there, then I'm going in because uh, the sun's gonna be coming up soon, and. Uh, <laughs> it's going to start getting warm again. So, Anyways, uh, I'm going to leave it here for now, and I will see you guys in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory, all's BTS vlog. All right. Have a good day. Yeah.
Democratic Earth. Earth.